Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and it's time for day three of the auction. You're going to have a chance to get your hands on the ISU-1222. It's a double barrel tier 8 tank destroyer and it will have the highest alpha damage of any premium tank in the game at 780. If of course you're able to hit both of the vehicle's 122 millimeter barrels at the same time. In today's video I'm going to let you know whether this tank sacrifices too much to be able to gain this minor alpha damage advantage and whether this tank is worth the very large amount of gold that you're likely going to have to spend on it. Is it the new best tank destroyer premium inside the game? So firstly let's take a look at the ISU 1222's armor layout and you might think well this doesn't really look like the front of a vehicle and bizarrely enough when we look at the back of it this looks strangely like the hull of an IS or an IS-2 from the front if you um, forget about the, the barn that's been erected on top of it. Accordingly, this vehicle it, it is pretty much just a back-to-front IS with a horrible structure and two meaty guns attached to it. It even has the vents, I guess, for the engine right there like you would have on, on the IS. So it's literally a back-to-front IS. IS, confirming this thing as an absolute Frankenstein of the game. But all of this is nice and well, but does the ISU-1222 actually have good statistics to be able to go along with this? I'm going to be comparing it to two tier 8 tank destroyers, the ISU-152K, which is the current highest alpha damage premium tank in the game, and also the Kari, which is a very competitive vehicle, which has kind of like a, a similar playstyle slash it's a competitive level that I want to compare this new one to. So immediately we notice this vehicle doesn't have as quite as good damage per minute as the ISU-152K, but it's still not bad, higher than the Kari. It's no slouch with that regard. However, you are not able to use a gun rammer on this vehicle as with all double barreled tanks. And so that means while the ISU-152K is going to be able to massively increase its damage per minute, the ISU-1222 can't do that. Penetration wise, this vehicle has 258 on its standard rounds and its gold rounds have 300. That's not bad at all. It's similar to the car re in this regard. And the fact that you do have heat as the premium rounds means that you've got a more flexible ammunition for when you're shooting at thinly armored surfaces that are angled by more than 70 degrees. One thing that's nice about this vehicle as well is the shell velocity 1100 is not bad on the armor piercing rounds on this tank and it carries more than enough ammunition to be able to go through the entire battle with a variety of rounds, unlike the ISU-152K, which can start to get a little bit dry at the end of the battle. All in all, this vehicle's firepower, it's good, and obviously you can deliver two shells at the same time to do 780 damage, but to be able to do that, you have to charge the guns for two seconds to be able to deliver a shot. Interestingly enough, this tank has a really low lockout time afterwards of one second, so you barely lose any damage per minute for firing doubles before you can start reloading again. However, this vehicle has something incredibly awkward, and that is, while its base reload is 10 seconds, which you're going to get down to about 9 seconds once you've got a premium consumable vents and brothers in arms on this tank, but the lock time, or should I say the time that it takes to switch between the barrels, is 7 seconds. This is crazy. So it means if you fire one barrel, you have to wait seven seconds before you can fire the other barrel, even if it's already loaded. And then if you fire, you lose that shell and then you lose all of the reload progress, that's seven seconds. Whereas you could have just waited an extra two seconds afterwards to be able to load an additional shell and then have two in the tank. Accordingly, because this shell switch time is so high, this vehicle, it pretty much only fires doubles. And there's very, very, very few scenarios where you would ever not wait that extra two seconds to be able to deliver the shell unless you're absolutely sure that your opponent was going to hit you in that time. So absolutely bizarre stuff there and it's one of the most unusual double barrel tanks in the game. So what about the gun handling? Well the aim time is fantastic at two seconds, the accuracy is pretty good at 0.37, makes the ISU-152K look lame in this regard. That's great considering that you do have that higher alpha damage once you combine the shells and the gun handling on this tank is not too bad with 0.1 on the turret and 0.15 when moving giving it about the same kind of gun handling as the Kari. Unfortunately this vehicle only has five degrees of gun depression which makes it very inflexible on a ridgeline unlike the Kari or quite a few of the other heavier tank destroyers in the game like the Yag Tiger prototype. Nevertheless all in all the gun handling on this vehicle is pretty darn good for a one two two millimeter that could fire twice at the same time. 
Now onto the mobility, 44, it's the same as all of these vehicles. They all roughly have the same power to weight ratio, although the ISU-1222 is a little bit better than the ISU-152 within that regard. However, the ground resistances on this tank are actually amazing, meaning that this thing never struggles to be able to get up to its 40 km an hour top speed, even on medium terrain, unlike the ISU-152K, and it outperforms the car Rion Soft significantly. Add to this an impressive tank traverse, and this high alpha damage, or shall I say, the opportunity for this tank to do high alpha damage, it's one of the most mobile tanks that can hit really, really hard. So now on to the armor of this thing. Is it good news for this tank? Well, 190 at the front looks like it absolutely smashes the ISU-152K, but is eclipsed by the Kari's 220. However, when we take a look at the armor model on this vehicle, ooh, that 200 is only, or should I say the 190 is only on the structure of this vehicle. Now, don't get me wrong, this is quite nice. If you're playing against tier six and tier seven tanks and you can hide the hull, then the structure on this vehicle can be quite nice, a lot like on a Kari. However, with only five degrees of gun depression, it's very hard to hide that hull armor, unlike on the Kari with its seven degrees, and the upper hull on this tank, even when you're using your five degrees of gun depression, is only 145, meaning that all tier six and tier seven tanks are going to be able to go through the uh, hull like it's nothing. But remember, this is pretty much the back of an IS. No wonder, right? The front at 30, Wargaming just seemingly just throwing out random numbers here and there, even though this really is a backwards IS. All in all, I'd say this vehicle's armor is poor, and even equal tier tanks, as soon as they load gold, will easily be able to go through the structure, and tier 8, 9, and 10 tanks are going to go through every single time, irrelevant of what kind of ammunition they use. Combine this with awkward lower plates you take, well, should I say the belly of the tanks, you take a lot of damage from artillery, and the fact that when you crest the ridge, your opponents can overmatch up into the 20 millimeters of armor here, and your only real chance in this tank is kind of side scraping and hoping that your opponents suck and hit the side of the vehicle and don't manage to hit the front or the structure if they've got 200 millimeters of pen. So this truly is one of the biggest downsides to this tank, that its armor is, I'd say all in all, probably worse than the ISU-152K, as at least that tank gets that magical mantlet that just seems to be able to absorb random shells. And undoubtedly, the armor isn't the strength of the ISU-152K, so that is alarming. And this tank, it's awful compared to the Kari with regards to its armor. Luckily, the vehicle's hit points is 100 higher than the ISU-152K and 50 higher than the Kari, which will help it to be able to take a shot or two. And the vehicle's view range at 370 means it can get away without coated optics with a good crew, a premium consumable and a field mod in most scenarios, unlike the ISU-152K, which will be absolutely blind. However, I would still need to use coated optics for those longer range maps, unlike the Kari that can probably get away without with 380 base. Crew-wise, this vehicle is the same as the T-103, the ISU-152K, and the SU-130PM, so if you have any tier 10 Soviet tank destroyer, the 268 or the 268 version 4, then your crew are going to work perfectly inside this vehicle. Crew skill-wise, you've got to have a good commander with Brothers in Arms is a zero skill perk because you're going to want to have Brothers in Arms, Repairs, Concealment, Recon and Situational Awareness before you're even remotely competitive on this tank. Then your extras like Eagle Eye and Firefighting, whatever you want to take. With your Gunner, I like Snapshot on this tank as it does have a fairly good gun traverse arc of 12 degrees to the left and the right. With Brothers in Arms, Repairs, Concealment, Dead Eye, Designated Target, if you can manage to get your hands on it, all of those things will be very useful. For the driver, Brothers in Arms, Repairs, Concealment, then add things like clutch braking, smooth ride. I don't really think this thing needs off-road driving because its, it's uh, ground resistance is already so good. But be warned, I've been set on fire in this thing quite a lot, so preventative maintenance will help out there. And I don't really think this thing needs controlled impact, although, you know, if you're crazy in your TDs, go for it. For the loaders, nice easy here. Just two loaders just doing one roll each, meaning Brothers Numbs repairs concealment, get intuition, probably on both of them if you want to switch out to heat, but definitely not the best thing to have on this tank, considering you're trading two shells for one shell and then having to wait for so long to get that extra shell in. So you might want to prioritize adrenaline rush on one of the crew, one of the loaders, and safe stowage on the other before you even consider intuition, or possibly even firefighting. For my two sets of equipment on the ISU-1222, it's really simple because you can't use a gun rammer. I'm going to use vents, durability, and turbo for one of my builds, and this is for when I'm bullying opponents at short to mid ranges. And for my second build, I'm going to be taking an aiming device with vents and coated optics that will give this thing enough view range for your larger maps while also having really good accuracy to be able to pull off some snaps. Field mods wise, this vehicle is nice and simple. Firstly, take the reinforced suspension, then improve the accuracy of the vehicle, then take the view range. And I personally like the survivability slot for the close quarters combat maps, but some of you will like to take the vision slot instead. Anyway, I think that's quite enough 
theory crafting, let's get stuck in. All right, so firstly, we're going to be rolling out on mines. Nice close quarter combat map. That's why I'm going to be using vents, durability, and a turbo. And you can get some pretty decent hit points on this tank with the durability inside a... Uh, a durability slot. 1,430 means that in this kind of a matchup, you are a pretty big brute. So, it's just such a weird tank. Every time I play this, I you can see I'm looking at the back going, yo, this tank's back to front. This back, this tank's back to front, Wargaming. Uh, I have to admit, having the engine at the front of this vehicle can end up being very frustrating, but we'll have to see in uh, the games I'm going to be fe featuring today just how much that engine either gets damaged or gets set on fire. And remember, I do have preventative maintenance on this press account as I do have all of the crew skills, but I'm going to be using standard equipment so you can get an idea of what the vehicle truly performs like. Oh, hello there, little tier 6 light tank. Are you having a fun game? I guess he's not having such a fun game anymore. It does feel very satisfying when you hit a double with this vehicle. And look at that reverse speed as well. With the turbo, able to get backwards incredibly quickly to be able to control the engagement, as you'd expect for a tank which is kind of back to front. I think Wargaming should have gone full meme with this vehicle and actually made it uh, go at 40 backwards and like 15 forwards. That would have been that would have been brilliant. As if it was like an archer at tier 8, but they didn't really want to go for that. I have to admit, it's pretty sickening when you do hit lower tier tanks with that double shot. I only needed to do 650 damage to that light tank. I had 780 average that could roll exceptionally high. You could roll near a thousand with that. Not quite a thousand. I guess you could roll pretty much like about 980, something like that, maybe 970 around that kind of an area with this vehicle, which would be just absolutely ridiculous. Actually, when I think about it, I think uh, the alpha damage would be 20 and then less, 25 less. So it would be probably about 975, I think, the potential. And while I'm doing quick maths, we one shot another tier 6 tank. The Basoto gets absolutely blown away by the might of the ISU-1222. And that is what this tank does, doubles. I would like you to uh, see the intuition here, kind of useful for being able to switch out, but again, I think it's a luxury. But what I really want you to, to pay attention to is in the center of your screen, if you see me fire a single shot in this game and not doubles in this game, look how long it takes to do that seven second shell switch but more important, I mean, what am I saying? Oh, go and count seven seconds. Uh, that's not what I'm suggesting. But look at how little time there is for how long it takes after that seven seconds to be able to reload just the full shell. Boom, three doubles in a row. 2,000 damage dealt. This is satisfying. And hopefully we're gonna blind fire the G-Saw as well. And I guess that is where this tank is strongest. Okay, now the shell lockout of seven seconds. Or should I, I really sh I really shouldn't call it lockout because the lockout is what happens after you fire a double. I should sell I should say the barrel switch time of seven seconds doesn't matter if you only have one shell. Obviously, because you're not switching between the barrels. And so what is actually one of the best things to do in this tank is to fire a double and then just fire a single afterwards. You don't get very much of a lockout. I'm trying to blind fire some doubles here. Am I firing blind heat? That's pretty filthy. And oh no, the Progetto punishes me once. The Progetto punishes, punishes me twice. And did you see that first bit of engine damage? And remember, you are rolling the dice every time your engine gets hit as to whether you are going to get set on fire. So preventative maintenance on your driver. If you want to drop the premium consumer, but well, if you want to drop the uh, fire extinguisher using the premium consumer, it might be very useful. So what I feel like is one of the best things about this tank is firing a double and then firing a single immediately afterwards. And there's the Progetto. Hopefully we're going to get them here. Unfortunately, I'm possibly at just a little bit too long and I made the micro adjustment. And you can see that I switched my shells there. Now just because the heat on this tank is only 830, whereas the AP is 1100. So I'm being an absolute gold noob there. I could have very easily have fired AP and I would have had the better shell velocity and maybe I would have caught the Progetto. Considering how close this game is, I can't afford many mistakes like that. We're going to go for a double again against the Progetto. I'm, I'm thinking it. I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want that double on the Progetto. I'm going to have a quick, quick look. Maybe I need to aim just a touch higher, trying to figure out where he would possibly be in the bush. Because you can't just keep whiffing doubles, right? You've got to try and hit those doubles. Blind doubles are the best doubles, right? 
I think I need to aim just a touch higher than this in retrospect. I think I hit the ridge and I should have aimed a little bit higher. What you want to do when you're blind firing a ridge line like that is you want to aim just a touch higher because then you're going to clear the ridge line. And that's most likely going to, uh, to hit the vehicle if they're sitting in a hold down position with just their turret exposed, for example. And when you know that you can absolutely dominate a pro progetto in that position, I should have done that. Unfortunately, my greed of the double means that now the SMV CC56 pushes forwards. I'm going to fire one shot into the building there, and this is the perfect opportunity. Look, shell switch out time is now, and then the reload is then. It's crazy. It's crazy. This, this barrel switching time of seven seconds really changes how you can play this vehicle. I guess what Wargaming didn't want this tank to be it was a tank that comes around the corner against two tanks that have 300 hit points and then it fires one at one tank and then one at another tank like three seconds or four seconds later even though that's how you'd kind of hope this vehicle would play so it doesn't have that capacity it's not a tank that is meant to fire a single and then a single seven seconds later you will have terrible damage per minute if you do that if you fire a single and you know your opponent isn't going to if the opponent isn't a one shot don't be stupid and fire immediately after your barrel finishes switching. Wait the extra two seconds and fire a double afterwards if you need the extra alpha damage, of course. If your opponent is like 350 hit points and less, I'd probably just fire a single. Maybe more like about 300 hit points and less, actually, when I think about it. Because the worst thing that could happen is if you fire then, then you got to wait the extra 10 seconds if you low rolled and you couldn't manage to finish off the target. So this is honestly what happened a lot for me in my ISU uh, 1222. But I was very surprised there that that CC56 managed to actually sneak out. It must have been the camo rating that that vehicle had. They snuck out and they went up on the hill. I thought I had them locked down. My plan was to ambush the SMV CC56 when it had to leave the building. And then just make sure I'm also still locking the Scorpion G and the G saw. Uh, down to stop them from leaving their base. Unfortunately, the CC56 got up on the hill without any spotting from my team, and so I'm trying to rush now to try and help out the Progetto. Unfortunately, though, the CC56 shuts them down, and now I find myself in a two versus five scenario where we have an artillery with us as well. So I'm going after this SMV. Now the Progetto gets spotted on my left, and you can see this vehicle's got good traverse speed, pretty good gun handling, and we clutch shot the Progetto. Now I'm going to reverse to try and avoid the artillery, and also avoid the CC-56. Unfortunately, that shell lockout time stopped me from being able to get the CC-56 there, but I clutch shot that tank. Okay, wow, this is tense now. Quacky baby against two tank destroyers and a self-propelled gun. I'm trying to fall back, thinking like, where are those TDs going to come from? The artillery's talking to me, saying, okay, just defend. I press affirmative and I have a look where the artillery is and oh. Yeah, I have to prepare the double. And unfortunately, the G-Saw has a two second intraclip reload and they shut me down very quickly. I got distracted there. I'm not saying the artillery was doing anything wrong. It was my bad. I was just looking where the artillery was to see if they were behind the building, whether they were in the open, whether they were trying to spot from any of the bushes, trying to assess the situation and the G-Saw was was focusing me down so this was just a really good example of the good things and the bad things of the isu 1222 we had the double barrel shots one shotting two tier six tanks and then crippling a scorpion uh, and giving us lots of alpha damage but then you saw how awkward it was with the shell switching time between the barrels and it's very depressing to have blocked zero damage when you're playing against tier six and tier seven tanks. So round two, we are rolling out on Paris in a tier 10 matchup. So as bad as it can pretty much be for this vehicle. And uh, what am I doing on that slope? Just messing about. But luckily there's a, a CS 52 lease that I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to get the double in. And I wanna stress that what you saw me do there with preparing the double, seeing that I wasn't going to be able to land it because they were pulling back around the corner and firing a single if you haven't watched my content much before about double barrel tanks, there is something that you must do. For any of you players out there who are going to purchase this tank and it's your first double barrel vehicle, you may not realize that if you leave the shell on the mouse button for the, you hold it down to deliver the double shot, you are going to be unable to release the mouse 
and then fire again quickly because there's a delay. You have to like let go for about half a second before you can then repress the mouse to fire a single shot. There's an awkward delay. So I'm looking for this WTL Panzer IV. I mark the map to see where the height is and I fire a double and we'll have to see in the post game stats whether we did hit that WTL Panzer IV or not. So seriously consider either using one of the mouse buttons that is on the side of your mouse or alternatively use a key on your keyboard to fire double shots. And I'll show you how you can rebind that just quickly if you go down into your control setting. It's fire a salvo. I have my fire a salvo on my C key. A lot of you are like, whoa, what are you doing? Uh, because that's the reload for the, uh, that's the reload for the, uh, not, that's the reload for autoloaders. But I've actually rebound reload on autoloaders to V key so I don't accidentally press that. And I use my C key for my double power shots instead. So, woof, that's a big amount of damage. The exact average damage that this vehicle does 780 against the STB1. So, while I'm not recommending if you've learned to reload your autoloaders with C that you rebind it to V now, I've done that because I use the C bind in quite a lot of other video games that I play for um, checking the map. And so sometimes when I play World of Tanks, I just press my C naturally to uh, to check the map. Uh, so that's why I've rebound the uh, rebound it to my V key with regards to the... Uh, oh, come on! With regards to the reload of an autoloader. Because the last thing that you want is to be thinking, oh, i got to check the map now. Reloading in the middle of combat could be pretty stupid. Plus, you can kind of fat finger the C key occasionally, but I think you'd be pretty silly to fat finger the V key. So, you, you you bind however you want, but just please, 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 try it. Try putting the, the fire a salvo on any key on your keyboard, and you'll notice how much better it is for releasing the double and then firing a single. You can fire it immediately. So, don't double bind your left mouse button is what I'm trying to suggest. It really does revolutionize how you can play your double barrel tanks. Also, I don't know how all you feel with aiming inside video games, but I feel like it's so much more smooth for me to aim. Oh, come on! I should have aimed a little bit longer there. If I'm not holding down my mouse button, I think if I can just not actually have to kind of like claw my mouse and then just move it like that instead while I'm firing, while I'm holding down the shell preparation on the keyboard, it allows me to fire smoother doubles, at least in my opinion. The only disadvantage there is, if you do put it on your C key, is that you can't turn right and prepare the double unless you move your middle finger to your D key, but then you can't go forwards unless you use your ring finger on your W key. I, I, so that's the only disadvantage of having the shell salvo fire on your C key, as far as I'm aware, that unless you're used to using your like middle uh, finger on your D key when you're firing the salvo to be able to turn right, which can be a little bit awkward for some people, you find what works for you, but please consider rebinding it. It's one of my biggest tips for your double barrels. So here, the ISU-122 is just getting around, just being a brute. And I might as well fire a double. There's no point in really only firing a single there if he's got 403 hit points. I've only got like a 4 out of 10 chance of being able to finish them off. Might as well double and then I can quickly start to get the uh, the reload going. And the damage per minute on this tank, it's not too bad. You can get around, you can prepare those those two shells inside your tank and then delivering them just like this. Oh, you just don't give your opponents time to react with that short two second preparation. And that makes this tank really scary, boys and girls. Really scary tank. Just how fast it is with the flexibility on the doubles. Uh, you can fire a single and then wait fully to fire a double, or you can fire a double and then wait to fire a single, which actually means that this vehicle has kind of the better 1,000 damage dealing than the ISU-152K because it has all of the advantage of saving up two shells, so it's walking around with 780 damage, and then after it fires, it could fire another shell for 390 nine seconds later. Whereas the ISU-152K, it does 750, and then it probably has to wait about 12 seconds to do, albeit another 750. And considering how often a thousand damage is enough to be able to finish off the enemy tank, that's a pretty nice little sweet spot to have, to have 1170 damage dealt 
if you can pen the double just 10 seconds later. So this was an ace tanker for the ISU 1222. And you'll notice that unfortunately I hit the tracks of the WT Alpha Panzer IV with the blind fire. Although it looks like I might've hit one of the STRV. No, I didn't hit the STRV 1030 when I was blind firing him. So that was 3000 damage dealt more than anyone else on my team. Not bad for a tier 10 matchup. And we managed to get 2300 assistance as well because this vehicle likes to get forwards. And this is a premium tank, so it will make you good credits even when you're resupplying premium consumables at full cost if you're not spamming gold. All right, let's hopefully do it all again on Siegfried line against tier nine tanks. So I haven't talked about how many of these vehicles are going to be available. And unless I'm mistaken, it's 30,000 on the European server and 10,000 on the North American server, which means that this vehicle will probably end up being, I don't know, are there really 30,000 people who want to just buy a premium tank uh, at a whim? I don't think it's going to go for that much. So, it's tough to say though, because Wargaming aren't telling me what the price is going to be. But the BZ721 ended up going for 22,000 minimum bid on the European server. 22,000! That's absolutely outrageous. I feel that I don't know how much the Beijing Opera cost, the 113 Beijing Opera cost when it was first released. I think that was in like 2021 or 2022. Uh, I, I, for some reason, thought that that thing cost like 13,000 gold. Maybe Wargaming are putting the price of these auctions quite high uh, because they feel like this is how many people are willing to buy them and they just want to put a lot out and try and bait people, uh, the people who are actually going to buy them at any cost. Maybe, possibly. I don't know exactly what this thing's going to cost. I hope it's like about 12,000 starting bid. I want to highlight this is the strength of this tank. This is what I was saying on the previous replay. This vehicle can do that 1,170 damage within kind of like the nine seconds. That's some crazy damage output. And then you can have the respite, the recovery. And there are so many tanks that are on that kind of amount of alpha damage. And these doubles with the shell preparation time, the good aim time, the pretty good gun handling as well, which you can improve with snapshot. Snapshot quite useful on this vehicle because of that nice gun arc. And this thing just absolutely claps. And then you can recover a little bit, think like, do I want to go after the Type 57? Why don't I go out and go after its bigger brother? The Type 68 seems to be just nice in the open for me. And this 248 millimeters of pen, it's of 258 millimeters, sorry. It's not like great pen for a tier 18, but it's not bad. I really look at this thing as more of a medium with without a turret. That's how I've been playing it. Quite aggressive, Assault TD. And if you play it like that, I've actually had some really good results in this vehicle. And unlike the BZ-72-1, which I think is quite a poor vehicle and definitely not worth the gold that a lot of people have been paying for it, uh, the ISU-1222, I think this is a good tank. I think it's actually quite a strong vehicle. It's quite a, a tricky one to play. Oh, looks like I missed one of those two shells, but still 400 damage, pretty good. It's quite a tricky tank to play that will require good mechanics. You'll have to know how to play your double barrels. You'll have to be practiced with your aim with your double barrels. A lot of people will have poor aim, poor mouse control when they're using the double barrels when they're preparing that double. And this vehicle, it will be terrible if you don't use the doubles on it. It is a tank that literally is designed for double shots. Wargaming couldn't be any more obvious with that with that seven second uh, shell switch time between the barrels i can't believe i bounced off an amx 5120 i probably hit it in the only part of the turret that i couldn't penetrate a little bit frustrated about that but just look how fast this thing is it definitely gets around again i'm using vents durability turbo to try and get me some extra hit points and i'm gonna fire a single there at the saladin i think i should have probably gone for a double and unfortunately more engine damage more fires yeah, I got set on fire quite a lot in this vehicle. Even with the preventative maintenance, I lost a lot of engine power on this tank. So I'd recommend you consider possibly using a large repair kit on this vehicle as well, because you will quite often lose your engine and lose your track at the same time. You just want to have as much flexibility to be able to uh, repair those tracks quickly if you've had to waste the small repair kit on the engine, right? At least if you're using the large repair kit while it's on cooldown, it'll still help you to be able to get your tracks back up naturally with the durability device. And here we go. I tried to double it, but yeah, I was greedy in my preparation time. <laughs> you can see 
<laughs> you can see I'm, I'm a little bit salty about that. But luckily, oh no, we don't even get the extra shot. Oh well, look, this was a four and a half minute game and I can't really be too salty about doing uh, 4,000. 400 combined in this kind of time because the result is another ace tanker 1400 base experience 1800 regular damage for our three kills and obviously this is a premium tank so we make a decent amount of credits even with a full price resupply of our consumables and also it looks like i fired quite a lot of gold rounds in this game so all in all the isu 1222 this is a much better tank tier for tier than the bz1721 that we saw yesterday and so I'm kind of happy that the BZ172 was sold first because there will be a good number of tank collectors who even if Wargaming put the worst vehicle inside the game irrelevant of how much it costs, they are going to purchase it. And that will probably squeeze a little bit of the gold to hopefully lower the price on a vehicle that's actually worth having, like the ISU-1222. However, when I think about it, you think tank collectors are not going to go and invest? Invest. I can't believe I said that. The 15,000, 20,000 gold that this thing will end up costing. I realistically think that this thing will go for oh, about 13,000 gold. That's my gut instinct because 30,000 tanks is a lot for the European server. There's probably, give or take, about 300,000 people who will log in during the each individual day of the week. At most, about half a million unique players, I think, for each of the days, especially on a weekday. So I don't expect the price of this thing to be ridiculously high. Is it worth spending 15,000 gold? Uh, probably not. Unless you're a tank collector, I'd say it's not worth it. There are other tank destroyers like the Yag Tiger prototype or the Kari that you could be able to get at a much cheaper price. However, I do think this one is good but it might only be good in the hands of good players. I think this thing is going to have quite a high skill cap. And unless you know what you're doing to make the double barrels, which is the feature of this tank, threatening to your opponents, then you might end up just feeling like you're playing a, a tier 7 heavy that's back to front with a structure that's okay if you're in a nice matchup. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my full tank review on the ISU-1222. Really hope you enjoyed it and it was useful for you if you're making a de decision about purchasing this tank today. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down and let me know what you think about this tank in the comments down below. Do you think it looks outrageously good? Do you think it just looks okay? Do you think that 780 alpha damage is our, is too high for a premium tank inside World of Tanks? Or do you think that the, uh, the time it takes to switch between the barrels on this vehicle of seven seconds prevents this tank from being too outrageous. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.